We can make sure you're accommodated, what you need. Much and uh, politics is tough, and it's uh, in many cases not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate it very much. The scene just yesterday is President Joe Biden and President-elect Donald Trump met for nearly two hours in the Oval Office from once being rivals just four years ago. President Biden ensuring a smooth and peaceful transition will take place in the days leading to Donald Trump's second term in office. Well, before the election, we invited Kurt Jefferson from Spalding University to talk about election night then. Mm -hmm, absolutely, and he's back with us tonight to talk about the transition. And first, we want to ask you about Matt Gates because everybody's talking about the president's cabinet picks, and he is the one with so many scandals sort of around him right now. We're talking about sex trafficking, having sex with a minor, someone who was 17 years old. These are things that Republican leadership cannot ignore. What do you think is going to happen here? Uh, yeah, uh, Connie, I, I think that when you look at Gates, um, kind of a lightning rod figure in the, his House career, uh, the pick reminds me a little bit of, of George Bush 43 picking the uh, former governor and senator from Missouri, John Ashcroft, who I knew personally back in Missouri hmm. when he'd come to my classes, but, but a little bit different because I think it's even a slightly more out of the mainstream, but certainly uh, the work that Gates has done in the loyalty toward uh, President Trump is, is a big thing for this uh, situation. Either way, it's uh, an unconventional pick so far. It looks like Donald Trump is staying to his word. He wants to shake things up. If he does that with the DOJ, would you see them potentially pulling out of uh, cities like with consent decrees, like here in Louisville, LMPD, uh, still negotiating on that? I'm not, I'm not so sure about that, but I do think the border is the big issue for the uh, DOJ. Um, and, and my guess is this is going to be uh, the legal fight with um, cities like Louisville and San Francisco and other places. So they could potentially, Doug, but I do think uh, this is one of the reasons they picked him, given his prosecutorial style. And going back to the cabinet picks, and we're talking about Gates, if they do not approve of him, how much pressure is going to be on Republican leadership for the other picks? Because there are several other ones that are also controversial. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. He's he's made some very interesting picks. He's picked some pretty, uh, you know, I think mainstream folks like Rubio and others from sure. the U.S. Senate. But I think the pick for the defense secretary from Fox News and so forth uh, caught a lot of people off guard. There's a lot of criticism. So, yeah, there's no doubt you periodically see, especially with judicial picks, uh, somebody put up first and then they aren't they aren't selected. And what will happen is they'll have to go back and talk to Senator Thune and others and find out who's acceptable. Mitch Marco Rubio for the position of Secretary of State. What would that appointment, uh, the message it would send to our allies overseas and uh, to people like uh, uh, Putin and uh, the war in Ukraine? Well, I, I, I do think if you recall, uh, Rubio was a rival about in 2016 uh, within the uh, primaries with Trump. So this is a closing of the gap a little bit. And I do think domestically, that's one of the things they're trying to shore up within the party. To Doug, Doug, to your question, I do think the fact that he's a hawk on defense and other kinds of things, absolutely, that will be sending a strong message to uh, some of the dictators around the world to, to, hey, America means business. Kurt from Spalding University, thanks once again for your insight. We'll be bringing you back in down the road. Thank you very much. Good to see you all. Thank you Appreciate so much. It. We could talk to you forever, I think. Yes. <laughs>